Welcome back to the Time Channel. The seats at the top end of my collection are taken by brands that most probably would not expect. At least it's not one of the brands that jump at you left and right when you open up YouTube. So if you're not familiar with the independent, family-owned watch company known as Carl F. Bucherer, I'll provide you with a quick introduction in this video. But if you already know the brand, stick around. This watch might still be news to you, because you might not instantly connect Carl F. Bucherer with, for example, a triple time zone chronograph with a patented, uniquely integrated GMT complication, would you? And why on earth is there a window on the side of this case? Let's head right into it. My name is Jan and you're watching The Time Channel. At the beginning of my watch journey, I personally knew the name Buchara first and foremost due to its vast network of jewelry stores and also from its special editions of other brands' watches, like for example the Tudor Black Bay Bronze Buchara Edition or many other household names, all coming in with a nice blue color scheme. Anyway, my first impression, and wrongfully so, was that this was just a typical jeweler's way into the watch world, with special edition collaborations with famous brands. Something along the lines of a Tiffany edition of a Submarino or Nautilus, by the way. Therefore, a few years back, I was still ignorant of the fact that Bucherer not only had its own watch brand, but that watchmaking was deeply rooted in the family-run business since its foundation in 1888 in Luzerne, Switzerland. Maybe I did come across this fact so late in my watch collecting journey because Karl F. Bucherer is more famous for elegant dressy pieces like the Monero line, and less known for its sporty chronographs. But that fact already changed in 2001, when the Patravi line brought some fresh designs to the CFB lineup. All of them rather bold and sporty, with hints of dressiness over the years. And the watch I will present to you today is part of that series. My 2011 Karl F. Bucherer Patravi Traveltech GMT. On that note, let's have a quick look at the other versions within the Traveltech GMT part of the Patravi lineup. Aside from various color and material iterations of the Travel Tech, like the Four Seasons line, the black DLC coded version, or if you're looking for the most exclusive iteration of it, the 4X limited editions, there was also a Travel Tech 2, which mainly distinguishes itself by having the fixed 24 hour scale on the outer bezel, rather than it being part of the Reode as it was with the first Travel Tech iterations. For the brand in general, it is important to mention that Karl F. Bucherer achieved a major step up in 2007 with the acquisition of Technique Horlogère Appliquée (THA), which was initially co-founded by no other than F.P. Journe, therefore elevating their development and production capabilities towards their own in-house movements, as it happened in 2008 with the CFB A1000, which is not only in-house by label, but also featured the world's first series-produced peripheral rotor. A major step for the brand as a whole. But to be clear, that's not what beats inside this one, which is in itself a technical marvel for other reasons, but more on the movement of this one later. Another side note which I find very amusing, Karl F. Bucherer popped up on my radar again in 2014, and I can therefore call myself a victim of clever marketing, because their watches were featured quite cleverly in the 2014 movie John Wick, where the protagonist, played by Keanu Reeves, always wears a Monero autodate. But the watches and brand cannot only be found on many of the actress' wrists, but they were also subtly incorporated in the scenery, as ads in the background, for example, like in this scene of John Wick 3. Not so subtle if you watch the currently available three movies anew with this information in mind. But let's leave it at that and get back to this specific Traveltech GMT. First of all, let's talk about the exterior, the case and the bracelet. Let me be completely blunt. This is a huge stainless steel watch with 47 millimeters in diameter, not counting in any of the crowns. The lugs are fortunately quite short and curved towards your wrist, resulting in only 56 millimeters lug to lug. A lot of mirror finish on this one and rounded off edges or beveled lugs, smoothening the overall look of this hefty, impressive case. The tops of the bezel and lugs are brushed in contrast, providing a bit more resilience to visible scratches. 
The case is 16 mm in height at the thickest point, giving them enough space to fit in a rather peculiar little sapphire window here on the left hand side, together with the GMT crown here. But more on that later. On the other side, the screw down crown carries the logo, crown guards and the chronograph pushers are trapezoidal and elongated, which almost provide an optical bridge from lug to lug. The lug width is 23 mm and the massive 5 link stainless steel bracelet is secured with screws. The angle formed in between the fixed end links and the lugs is quite interesting. While the lugs are sloped towards your wrist, the angle of the end links is not pointed as much, which generates an interesting look and fits the shape of my wrist perfectly. But to be fair, that increases the size of the wrist presence by a few millimeters beyond the technical lug to lug distance value that I just mentioned. The inner three links of the bracelet are brushed, the outer two are polished. Definitely a unique combination of link sizes and finish. And within the package there is also a nice black leather strap with white stitching and red underside. But I was never tempted to replace that bracelet. Which tapers down to 20mm at the trigger actuated double folding clasp with a brushed finish and the logo on top. The clasp itself is a real treat. Perfectly machined and decorated. Thin but not flimsy at all. The whole design is not only massive visually, but also comes in at the top end of my collection considering its weight. 244 grams with the bracelet, let that sink in. And you feel that on your wrist too, which I personally truly enjoy. And on top we have a sapphire crystal with AR coating on both sides and a magnifying cyclops attached to the other side of it. All in all, I would argue that this watch pulls off an almost elegant look in spite of its dimensions and weight. A feeling which is probably for the most part heavily supported by the dial aesthetics. The dial is anthracite, with a subtle sunburst to it while the subdials for running seconds, 30 minutes and 12 hour counter of the chronograph have a lighter shade of grey around them. But wait, the subdials are all dedicated towards the chronograph? How are there three time zones then? Well, let me explain. That question leads us towards the most striking feature the two chapter rings around the dial for the patented GMT complication by Carl F. Bucherer on these models. The second time zone can be set quite traditionally with the red GMT hand, which moves alongside the central hour hand when adjusting the time on the second position. On the first position only the hour hand for local time moves in one hour increments. Now if you're wondering that this complicates things when you just want to adjust the GMT quickly in one hour steps, bear with me. Because there is a second crown right here which additionally introduces the third time zone quite cleverly. That second crown at 10 o'clock has a W and E on it, which corresponds with East and West. You can turn this crown in each direction and it will snap into place after a 90 degree turn. Now, based on the direction, West or East, that you've set, you can now move the innermost chapter ring with the push of a button and advance it in one hour increments in the direction of your choosing. Amazing execution and GMT functionality, which you can also directly marvel at and see how it operates with each push through the small sapphire window on the side. Way to show off a main feature. The crown for the GMT chapter ring actuation is not screwed down, which I guess is one of the main reasons why this watch only provides a water resistance rating of 50 meters in total. Now back to the dial. The hands are partially skeletonized with loom on the tip, which can also be found on the upper tip of the hour markers and a loom shot reveals a nice blue glow. The date and cyclops above it in between 4 and 5 is a positioning that not everybody will enjoy. A quirk about the date needs to be mentioned. On the one hand, it is astounding that the date can also be set backwards, a feature rarely found on mechanical watches. But on the other hand, it is also a bit of a consolation, because there is no traditional quick date function via one of the crown's positions. Therefore, in a worst case scenario, you have to go through the 24 hour cycle 15 times to arrive at the correct date. So let's have a quick look at the quite beautiful case back in my opinion. And aside from the typical amount of information on it, you also have a nice raised logo of the globe with the traveler's module crown attached to it. And all around the case, you have all the different major cities denoted here with the corresponding GMT times. About the movement, this 2011 Patravi Travel Tech contains the CFB 1901.1 movement, which on close inspection is based on an ETA caliber 2894-A2. Scandalous, right? Not really. 
Not only is the base caliber heavily modified, but the proprietary GMT or Travelers module on top transforms this into a thing of its own. A module that was also patented in 2006 by Karl F. Bucherer. Additionally, this base caliber is modified towards COSC certification standard, therefore quite accurate. The chronograph starts exceptionally smooth even though it's a cam and lever actuated one. The vertical couple enables you to have the central seconds hand running permanently without major drawbacks. So this brings me to the price. The watch retailed for 9300 euros in 2011 and it is the same price now if you want to get them brand new. I myself got this one pre-owned, as always, and in general pre-owned versions with box and papers are currently somewhere in the range of 6,500 to 8,000 euros, depending on aging condition on Chrono24. Considering the price and my general praise of this watch, I need to address the box itself quickly, because although it is in most parts a very well-made, impressive box, it does not age well. They used synthetic materials here for this inlay, and after several years, I guess the plasticizer evaporates or anyhow the material decomposes and little shreds of that material came off. It diminishes the look of the whole packaging. As a passionate fan of older watches, I wish that they would also consider how these materials age over the years. Now for my conclusion. I did not want to stress this too much in the early parts or title of the video, because I think the term is overused to generate hype, which I'm increasingly repelled by, since it is usually the same watches over and over again. But for me, this watch was, and still is, a grail. There I said it. I hope I did justice to this brand and watch model with my video, and you enjoyed your time with the Patravi Traveltech GMT by Karl F. Bucherer. Thank you for watching the Time Channel, and see you in the next one.